morning, Yorks Classic Cars Limited fans, uh, and welcome to another, well, distinctly overcast day in Retford. Um, it's raining, it's, it's mild, but it's pretty manky out there. Anywho, uh, quick update on the Mega Squirt MS2 installation video uh, series that I started. Um, I've made a little crack at it yesterday. Um, <laughs> it's an incredibly slow process, so I'll show you what I've done because I haven't videoed what I've done per se, you, you'll understand why when you see it. So without further ado, I'll show you the steps I've gone through to get where I am now. Okay. So if you look in the car now, um, you should be able to see that the wiring, the actual car wiring loom, I've chosen to keep separate. So this is as though you'd be adding it to a car that already had a loom. So say you were buying a, a Golf or an Escort or whatever. Um, so it's a bit dark in there, but the lights obviously don't illuminate in a car. Um, <clears throat> all the power lines are run and things like that now um, and the ECU is now mounted on the tunnel if you can see there if you're not just getting a really good view of my indicator stop there we go um, what I've done is I've, I've, I've sort of uh, debated that a little bit and what I've done is whoops sorry what I've done is left it so that you can get to the memory card slot and the programming slots um, a friend of mine's fitted an ECU in his car, an, an aftermarket ECU, and he's been giving me a little bit of guidance. Um, the plugs for the connections to the engine and the power and everything are at the back. But of course, you don't need to touch those very often. These will need touching for mapping and the like. And you need to be able to see the, the uh, red LEDs at the front. So he said, if you were sat with a laptop on your knee, that would make a better choice. Because then if you're using the clutch, which is obviously here, you're not going to be knocking the wires out and damaging them or breaking them or anything. That's just a bulb holder for the, uh, for the gauges. Just ignore that. Uh, and that's the other power cable. That's all the car loom that I've loomed up. Um, it's only a matter of taping it up. Uh, and I've made an aluminium section now to finish that off. First uh, part of the, of the loom, excuse me, the, that I've gone for. Um, the engine is obviously cleared now of the loom. Um, <coughs> its existing loom is gone. This sensor will be necessary. That's the water temperature sensor for the ECU. This one here will be plugged. That is the temperature sensor for the gauge, which obviously I'm not using. I'm using a capillary gauge, as you can see the pipes down there. Um, I've wired up the um, power wires to the alternator. The, the alternator exciter wire and the um, bu -bu -bu -bum, live feed to the fuse box. So the fuse box is live and everything actually, when you turn it on, it does actually work and the car turns over. <coughs> the only reason I've done that first is just for routing of cables. As you can see, it's all just tie wrapped loosely together under there. And I've taped off the um, bulkhead there for mountings, mounting of the ignition coils. So if I remove this, bit of blue roll that's stopping muck going in the engine and the fuel rail. I have my injectors. Uh, I'm going to order the plugs for those today. You can buy pre-wired plugs, but I like to solder everything and I tend to find people crimp them. So if you can see the tape on the back there, that's for the coil packs. <coughs> I've ordered some countersunk screws, so I've countersunk the holes in the uh, coil packs. And those are going to be mounted here, which is incredibly hard to show you. But they're going to be mounted in the middle there, just to keep plug length wires reasonable. Uh, now, this took a lot of sort of thinking out. I was going to have one mounted on each rocker cover, but then they were going to get too hot, I think. Um, this will give them a bit of an air gap between the engine, um, and it will give me um, space to route the plug leads and the feed wires. So each one side by side here, close to where the originals are. I thought I'd worked a number by using the original Rover V8 bracket, but it, unfortunately the coil packs are deeper and that didn't work. So what I've done then, <coughs> and again, I'm not teaching you how to solder, but I've, I'll just lay this out on the floor. Oops, fell over the fuel rod. So if you can see that now, this is the plug for the MS2. Um, and what this goes to is the two coil pack plugs. Now these coil pack plugs, the coil packs they use are Volkswagen Audi, uh, say at Volkswagen Audi. Um, and they are four pin. One is a 12 volt ignition fed, so your coil feed basically, that comes and stays on when you're cranking the engine. One is an earth to the bodywork, and then the other two, oops, are the feed wires. So there are four outputs, two are fed by one coloured wire, and one is fed by the other coloured wire. So what I've done there is, <clears throat> in no particular order, I've made a note of this for future reference, 
So pack one, coil pack one, which is the offside, uh, is the white with a silver dot wire. It goes to A, which feeds uh, cylinders one and six, which is number three, point, uh, position three on the coil. Uh, black and yellow goes to B, which is eight and five, and number one on the coil, and so and so forth for the other bank. Okay, now I've got that. <coughs> Sorry, bear with me, I've lost a piece of paper here. Oh goodness, here it is. Put it to one side, especially for this video. So that comes from this uh, diagram that's on the Extra FI website. And here are my spark A, B, C and D. Obviously if you have a four cylinder, you'd only have A and B. But for an eight cylinder, there, that is my firing order, okay? That's a Rover firing order. I believe it's a Chevy firing order. Not sure about Fords. Uh, you'd have to check that and Mopars and things. But Spark A is cylinders one and six. Now, if you look here, I've got Spark A going to cylinders one and six, which is position three on the coil, which will go on the driver's side, the offside in the UK, okay? So I've made a little loom plug up loom up so this comes from here these are the feed wires to the coil Zzz, coils so that goes one to each coil uh, the slightly longer one goes to the one further away that goes to a loom plug these are just some plugs i had i bought these years ago and, and i just really wanted to get on with it so those are some i have they're waterproof plugs and that will go under the bulkhead that's so i can remove all this section without you know cause myself any pains really because some of it will be more hardwired that is then connected to these um, weirdly these colors are quite close to these colors these are sections of wire i've tried to retain a different color for each these sorry uh, and i've used those from from taking them out of some old 350z looms i had over there which are obviously automotive grade thin wall cable and the only two fly leads that are left when that goes through the bulkhead this needs harnessing up obviously, um, but I'll do that once I know how long I need to cut these. These are the right length to go to the ECU. Uh, you don't know if you can see the grommet, but it's up there at the back of the, uh, just up to, well, to the left of that cross, the, um, excuse me, to the left of the roll cage bar, sort of just adjacent to where you can see the washer hose dangling down. And this is to a, the 12 volt switched feed, and this is to an earth. That is the first part of my loom. I'm keeping the rest of the loom separate from the coil packs. And that is now ready to rock and roll. Once I've got the coil packs in, I'll show you that. But this is now going to be routed in. Um, I'm going to harness this up, okay? Um, because that is now self-contained as its own little harness. These I'll leave out. They will need cut into length. Um, they are, I've left them a little bit longer. They're slightly heavier duty, um, purely because of the load on the coils. Um, the only reason I do that is because you're better to have it too heavy duty than not heavy duty enough. It lowers resistance and things. And if you use this thin wall that I've used here, that's to each coil individually. And I know that's, uh, I think that's 28 amps. I could be wrong. Um, but I know that's more than enough for the coil draw. Okay. So yeah, that's the first stage. That needs installing. I appreciate it's not a massive step, but hopefully it'll all work. The next part of the videos will be um, the next section of the loom. <coughs> I'm trying to work. It's going to be quite a slow series. This, and I do apologize for that, but... I'm trying to work out. So I'm ordering parts at the moment for the oil system to feed the turbo and stuff. And then I'll start building it on. And then I need to put the crank position sensor in first. And I can start then soldering the other plug, which is here. Okay. And that's everything else on the engine. These are like group earths and stuff like that. Uh, and I can sort out which wires go to what. Um, and I can look at powering up the ECU and powering up uh, every little sensor on the engine. All the connections, I've crimped them and then soldered them because I'm, I'm fastidious with soldering stuff. A loose connection can cause you so much grief. It takes forever to solder them. It really did take uh, half an hour here, half an hour there, and it did, oh, it's just a pain. However, in the long run, it's worth it because you know it's good and solid and strong and you're not going to get that intermittent uh, fault potentially. I mean, you still could, but it's unlikely. Um, that you have to trace back to a dodgy bit of wiring somewhere where the wire's got loose in the plug and it's, it's creating some feedback. So um, that's why I've done that. So addition three will be me continuing the rest of the loom. Appreciate this is just a short update, but hope it's of use. Um, and I'll install that um, 
once the coil pack screws have come, I need some 100mm long screws to go through the bulkhead. Lovely. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't, uh, if you like the video, please consider liking it. Uh, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the old bell around That would be great. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.